Sometimes you have to show people that their life is worth it because it's hard for them to realize that. Addiction, depression, isolation, lack of self-worth, anxiety, and religion are all topics that sorority noise touch on throughout their discography, and they discuss these subjects at great length. But what makes their material particularly interesting is that all of the darkness emanating from their work is the result of singer Cam Bechet opening up about his personal struggles and adversities. Some bands like to leave their lyrics entirely open to interpretation, and what I mean by that is, you don't always know if a band's lyrical content is a true story from their life, a fictional tale, or even an event from someone Someone else's life depicted from their point of view. And I think it's cool to have that type of ambiguity surrounding your words, but I also think it's cool that Cam is super direct and basically says, all of these lyrics are about my life and are deeply personal to me. And for what Sorority Noise is trying to do, that's the perfect way to present their words to fans. Today we're going to take a look at Sorority Noise and the various ways in which they explore mental health, why their methods reach such a large audience, and how each album in their catalog can play a different role in a pursuit toward a healthier mental state. Before we dive into the meat of this video, there is an elephant that I have to address. In early 2018, Cambache was accused via a Reddit post of committing a terrible act. He responded by saying that he believes it was a miscommunication, and obviously there's more to it than that, and that was a very condensed version of the events, but that's not what this video is about. I'm not here to tell you how to feel about the situation or add any additional commentary, but I am here to tell you that I believe Cam and his friends made some incredible music that can potentially serve as a tool for those struggling. I originally found Sorority Noise through Cam's previous project Old Grey, and through Old Grey I found Broken World Media, which is now the defunct record label that put out the first Sorority Noise LP and introduced me to a ton of great artists. I remember my first time hearing Forgettable, my thoughts were, wow, this is a lot to take in. The album felt so broken and self-deprecating to the point where I was almost uncomfortable, and of course my 17-year-old self automatically fell in love with it. One thing that I picked up on right away was that the entire album, at least lyrically, was Cam going over his shortcomings, negative feelings, and I found it really interesting that the whole record was written like this. This. Because for example, an artist may write a song about feeling depression or anxiety, but that's usually it. It's not like their whole album is about that. But Sorority Noise takes the opposite approach. And that's one of the many things that really separates them out and makes them shine different. By having such a laser focus on these difficult subjects, it allows for them to explore the various feelings that are tied to and stem from things like anxiety and depression. Through this, Cam is able to detail topics like isolation, something that can very easily happen if you never leave your house, or even even something as complicated as the way depression and anxiety can temporarily alter the relationship you share with your family and friends. On Your Soft Blood, track 5 from Joy Departed, Cameron asks the difficult question, how do you become more to your friends than a conversation piece? This hits on two different ideas because it's a reminder how tough it can be to open up to those you love about your issues and touches on the fear of what could happen if you do. For me, it's always been difficult for me to open up about my struggles out of fear of thinking that I would become that person with issues and not be perceived as a real human being. This line helps me remember that even though my problems are a part of me, they're not who I am. Something that I like about Cam's lyrics is that while he never romanticizes the feeling of wanting to die, his outlook towards things is isn't always positive, which makes his expressions feel more sincere. Sometimes honesty isn't negative or positive. It's just the truth. Beware, I'm not who I used to be. I've had a lot of things go wrong with me, and I'm sorry I'm not capable of lying. It's crazy how depression can wear you down and make you do things you normally wouldn't do. It makes you say yes to things you normally wouldn't, and makes you withdraw from anything that brings you joy. It's not that depression makes you feel sad, it makes you feel nothing. And when you're feeling nothing, all you want is to feel something. And since the things that you love no longer bring you joy, you start searching for anything. And oftentimes, it's a substance, speaking purely from experience. But once that euphoric feeling goes away, you'll do anything to get it back, and you'll forever be chasing the way you felt that first time you did it with your friends. Their most famous song, Using, exemplifies these ideas. I started using again, needed a distraction from my head, devil on my shoulder, said try this instead. 
Typically what happens after you enter this phase is, at least for me, you begin to withdraw and isolate even further, tailoring all of your actions to whatever will help you get your fix, only hanging out with those toxic people that encourage you to try it in the first place, and family and friends will be put at an arm's distance because they'll obviously notice that something is wrong and really want to help, but when you're in this stage you flee from those people, because you know that getting help also requires confronting everything, so you'd rather just waste away. I spend most of my time in my room, and lately that's made me wonder if I've given up on trying to be someone new. The worst thing about isolation is that it helps perpetuate already untrue ideas, and magnifies them a thousand times. Because when you're out in public, you might say in your head, I hate myself. But when you're at home, isolated in your room, you have all the time in the world to think of reasons A through Z as to why you hate yourself and come up with supporting arguments as to why. And because of this, an isolated person feels even more worthless and less motivated to leave their bed. Nobody likes me, that's what I tell myself. I live alone in my own hell. It's important to remember that even though you may hate yourself and think your existence is worthless, there's a whole planet of people that would say otherwise and tell you to shut down those stupid ideas. Because they're not true. Your brain is lying to you. And trust me, I know it's not that easy. But over time, it's possible to develop a healthy, positive relationship with yourself and work to maintain it. When it comes to any band, one of the things that I'm most interested in, besides their music, is how they became successful or got to where they are. And with Sorority Noise, I think it comes down to two major things, besides their music being really good, of course. Number one being how everything is presented and packaged. The way the three Sorority Noise albums are portrayed is crucial because they're extremely personal snapshots of Cam's life being recorded and documented. It makes you feel like you're following a narrative because you are. And not only is it a really good story, it's the life story of a real person that exists. Naturally, you feel more connected, everything feels more real, and it leaves a longer lasting impact. It makes you put more stock in what he's saying since he's gone through it himself. Reason number two is their position within the communities they're tied to. The genres they play are already very niche, i.e. emo, indie, and pop punk. But by being that one emo band that specializes in talking about mental health, they effectively create a niche within a niche, which makes them pop out. By having such a clear focus on what they want to say and convey, it makes it easy for new fans to see what they're all about, and makes it easy for them to decide whether or not Sorority Noise is for them. After finishing writing down all of the lyrics from their albums, I began going through and highlighting parts I found interesting, and then started trying to find similarities, patterns, topics, ideas, all that. And through this, I found that each album has a few concepts that the record revolves around. For me, Forgettable feels like the result of depression and deals with things like lack of self-worth, isolation, and hopelessness. It feels like when the depression is just starting. Then Joy Departed feels like when the depression gets worse. The album couldn't have a more appropriate title. We feel a sense of longing, wanting to feel something again, resorting to a substance and everything that follows after. Their third and final record, You're Not As Blank As You Think, deals with a lot of death, touches heavily on depression and anxiety, with religious references in at least half the tracks. It feels like things get worse on this album, but it also feels like things get better, like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You get the sense that there's some recovery and understanding happening here. Cameron comes off as more aware of what's going on in his own head, and is seemingly striving toward a road to recovery. As Cam said, sometimes you have to show people that their life is worth it, because it's hard for them to realize that. And that's exactly what Sorority Noise is as a band. We've all heard things like, your life has value, and the world is a better place with you in it. And at times those sayings seem insanely corny and cliche because they're obvious and true. But when you're depressed, anxious, or feeling low, it's really hard to believe that those statements are true. But Sorority Noise are here to remind us that they are true. And if you ever need a reminder, just press play. Thank you for watching. Yeah, so you know, we wrote like the first song, and you know, like, you we. gotta put this fucking circus part at the end of it. <laughs>